Captain's Log, Subdate 20721.6. The mermaids have been busy crafting. It looks like a trebuchet, but we will monitor the system closely to see what their intentions are. I changed the bulbs in the pod to red alert, just in case. On this channel, there is a playlist of eight videos. This now becomes nine. Those eight videos contain within them a timeline of events over the last 18 months. The events center around an individual called Shamima Begum. Shamima Begum was a 15 year old who left the United Kingdom after being groomed by another woman who has since gone on to subsequently lose her passport. Shamima Begum went to Turkey before crossing into Syria, giving up her passport with her two friends and meeting her husband, going on to have three children who are sadly no longer with us. The intention was to live within the ISIS Caliphate of Raqqa, which as I have stated in all of those videos, resembles rubble or a council estate. There is in reality a lot more to this case, and I will urge everyone who is interested to go back and watch those eight videos for greater, more detailed context, but I am going to give a brief rundown to add on to what I have said so far, as I believe it to be all quite pertinent to what has transpired recently that in and of itself sets a very dangerous precedent, and with that precedent, a potential floodgate could in fact be opened, one that is dangerous, and so one has to wonder what was going through the Court of Appeals' heads when they came to the decision that is now the title to this video. Shamima Begum was first brought to our attention when ITV News and Sky News did interviews with her. She had just had her third child and she looked incredibly lethargic. She was tired, her caliphate had been annihilated, and she was in need of medical assistance for herself and her child. She at the time was living in the ISIS wife wing of a Syrian prison camp. She later on moved to Camp Sunshine, that is its actual name. Because of the publicity, she received a fair amount of flack and criticism, and the public wasn't really heavily divided, but there were some that were supportive of her, because they understood that her age being 15 and her being groomed online by someone meant that she wasn't making an adult decision before she made the decision to leave, in the manner that she did. The majority though resoundingly said, no, you stay there, you do your time for the crimes you committed in Syria, which would include being one of the morality police in Raqqa, you know the kind, who wear their full garb, carrying a Kalashnikov, and <clears throat> enforcing the will of Allah, in their own perverted way that is where she herself believed that it was regular to see her head in a bin, and when she was first interviewed, justified the Manchester bombing attack, because Syria had been airstruck, therefore this was recompense. Tit for tat, you know, swag. When the caliphate fell, her husband was sent to a prison. Many were, in fact. The home office, upon hearing everything that had happened with all the begging from Shamima's family, not the extended family, they themselves are divided on this. Then Home Secretary Sajid Javid decided, oh whoa, what do we have here? Let's take away a UK citizenship because she is a risk and a danger to the British people. So he did, because even though under international law you cannot render someone stateless, she herself has Bangladeshi heritage. Should be noted, they said no. Her father, I believe, also said no. I can't imagine why. As time went by, with Shamima being held within the camps that she resided within, things got a little cosier, she unfortunately lost her third child, and she then believed she needed treatment for a whole host of mental issues, PTSD being one, depression being another, anxiety another. My view then, and I have linked all the videos down below courtesy of the playlist, I said, no. You committed a crime in Syria, therefore you do the time in Syria. Granted, their judicial system is not like the UK's. You don't get access to their Wi-Fi, and you'll be hard-pressed to find a way to keister stash a phone, but only because their way of dealing with a lot of things is a full-blown case of deadness. 
After which, everything went a bit quiet. Shamima's lawyer had indicated that he intended to take this to the Court of Appeals, but in truth, I didn't believe this could go much further. My view was, yes, a dumb child made a mistake, but sadly she's now an adult and it took until she had lost everything for her to finally realise, ah, the UK is a better place for me to live. Although she was willing to settle for the Netherlands had they granted her husband right to go home. I don't believe they have. Imagine my shock. Well, after many months of silence, the Court of Appeals has decided Shamima Begum can in fact return to the UK to fight for her citizenship. There is a problem here. If her feet touch British soil, she never has to leave. You can say otherwise, but actually no. She won't ever have to leave. We as the British know this well enough. The system may say one thing, but we have seen it play out so many times. To the same conclusion, that it is in fact inevitable that she will be able to remain here, even if it is at Her Majesty's pleasure. If anyone watched Dankula's video last week on John Venables, you'll understand what that term means. Arguably, it is the safest way for Shamima Begum to live within the UK, at Her Majesty's pleasure. Because there are enough people here who now know what she looks like because her face has been literally everywhere, that it would be very, very difficult for Shamima Begum to pass amongst the lowly oiks and peasantry unnoticed. Which means the only way she could truly be safe would be in a prison. Which is coincidental because she will be arrested the moment her feet touch the floor. And that's because even her own family lawyer admitted the UK cannot be sure Shamima Begum won't be a terror threat when she returns to the United Kingdom. The UK Foreign Office has indicated it will appeal this decision. So there is a chance that while Shamima Begum is happy she won this particular battle, she could still lose the war. On a TV show called Good Morning Britain, a former British currency trader who travelled to Syria to fight with the Kurdish militia against ISIS said he doesn't trust the British legal system to get this right, because just one in ten jihadis who have come back to Britain find themselves in court. His fear is that Shamima Begum will come back to the UK and get a slap on the wrist and she'll be out within two years. Why can't they, ISIS that is, stand trial in Syria and Iraq where they commit these crimes? That has often baffled many. In many instances, it's down to the treaties we have with those countries which is why in some instances they come home. But the dangerous precedent I've mentioned earlier is that this could in fact open up a gate for up to 150 terrorists to come home to the UK, which is in and of itself a very dangerous thing. That would include a former bouncy car salesman, Siddhartha Da, known as Jihadi Sid, Hungry Hamza Parvez, Asil Muthana and Jihadi Jack because they were all stripped of their British citizenships, but because of this, they could in fact be allowed to come back here and contest it. So what happens now? Home Office is appealing this ruling. That means that this now goes to the Supreme Court. The judges have to look at the arguments and then decide by the end of July whether they will grant a full hearing on the issue. If they reject the appeal either at the first stage or after a full hearing, then Shamima Begum could be back in the UK within hours. The Special Immigration Appeals Commission, which is a semi-secret court that hears national security cases, had ruled that Shamima Begum had not been rendered stateless by the UK because she can ask Bangladesh for citizenship. The tribunal also ruled it was fair to hear her case while she was still in a Syrian camp. Now they have to turn to consider again whether ministers had legitimate national security grounds to bar Shamima from coming back to the UK, probably and more than likely with her in court. Scotland Yard has confirmed, should this happen, yeah, she's getting arrested. And the Metropolitan Police have said they have no reason to fear, if nothing else comes to light, that they will be treating them as terrorists. But the defending lawyer believes that because of the age of when they left the United Kingdom, effectively that grants them immunity. So I guess the more important question is, what could Shamima Begum be charged with? Currently, ministers are introducing terror laws to target ISIS fighters who cannot be prosecuted for other crimes because of a lack of proof. 
the Counterterrorism and Border Security Bill would make it an offence punishable by up to 10 years in jail for anyone to enter a designated area abroad unless they can provide a reasonable excuse. But the proposed legislation could not be applied retrospectively to Begum. The sentence for supporting or being a member of ISIS is up to 10 years. Other offences that could be considered include disseminating terrorist material, terrorist fundraising and terrorist training. Any involvement in activities that involve the loss of life would lead to very different charges with a far longer sentence. I'm not going to bother saying this is the last time because I think I've said that four times already, but I will leave this open because I'm very much interested to see if she comes back or not. If she doesn't, I guess Christmas comes early. With this, I'd love to know what you all think. I would like to believe I've made my points on this now quite clear. But I'd love to know what you all think, so please do let me know in the comments down below. If I don't see you tonight on Twitch, because yes, I'm streaming there again. Hope you'll have a cracking Tuesday, and thank you all for listening.